Shalom to the elect of the nation of Israel. It's another edition of the daily edification, the daily exaltation, and it comes to you through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bar Shem Yahushai Bar Shem Rakakwadash. All praises and glory is due. I'm going to call this video, And They Were Offended in Him. And they were offended in Him. And this is in reference to the book of Matthew, the 13th chapter, beginning at the 53rd verse, where it speaks about Yahweh Shai and his country folk. You know, those are the people that came up with him. You know, those were the people that were part of his village. They were offended in Yahweh Shai when he made the statement that he was the only begotten son of the Heavenly Father, and that he was the bread that came down from heaven which is a metaphor for him having the 100% the truth of the Heavenly Father, the total knowledge of the Heavenly Father. So when he made those statements, his, his country folk, his town folk, were, was offended in him because they knew his father and his mother. So at the same time, this proves that our Lord had a biological father. And... Uh, one of the reasons why his country folk, his town folk, was offended in him when he made the statement that he came down from heaven is because they knew his parents. Okay, so what does that prove? That proves that he had a biological father. Now you have many of these wacky-tacky Christians, they believe various things. They believe that either his mother was impregnated by the Holy Spirit or impregnated by an angel or impregnated by a miracle, as if Mary was asexual, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, they, they fully admit that, as it is written, the scripture says that Mary conceived seed, but when you tell them, look, she conceived seed through her husband, Joseph, they don't want to accept it, okay, like it's impossible, when, you know, when you read the scriptures, that's exactly what it tells you, it tells you that Joseph was a spouse to Mary, when you look up the word espouse, the, I know in the Spanish it's esposada, which means husband. Okay? Esposada, which means husband. So indeed, Joseph was the husband of Mary. And it was Joseph that impregnated Mary, thereby bringing forth her first child, which was Yahawashai. Okay? Anyway, I'm going to read the book of Matthew, the 13th chapter started the 53rd verse it says and it came to pass that when Yahweh had finished these parables he departed thence and he, when he was coming to his own country when he was coming to his own country the people that came up with him he taught them in their synagogue insomuch that they were astonished and said whence have this man this wisdom and these mighty works now listen good, listen real good. Is not this the carpenter's son? Now who is that carpenter? That was Joseph, okay? That was his occupation, right? He was a carpenter. And so it was the Lord's occupation as well. All right? Is not this the carpenter's son? Is not his mother called Mary? And his brethren, that's another thing that these wacky-tacky Christians don't want to accept, that Yahweh actually had biological brothers, okay? This is what is meant by his brethren. James and Joses and Simon and Judas. Now, two of his biological brothers was in the faith, and two of them was not. James and Judas was in the faith. Joses and Simon was not. But they were all his biological brothers, Okay? So let's read 55 again. Is not this the carpenter's son? Is not his mother called Mary? Now keep in mind, those of us that know history, the belief of Yahweh Shai not having a biological father, that goes back to the Council of Ephesus. Okay, it was there that they started circulating, which they took from pagan folklore, Babylonian pagan folklore. It was then they started circulating the story of Mary being asexual, if you will, and not having a husband to uh, father her child, which was her first child being 
Yahweh Shai, which the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. That belief goes back to the Council of Ephesus, okay, which was in the, I believe, the 5th century AD, somewhere in the 400s, uh, for, I'm, not, I'm not sure of the exact date, okay, and if you know anything about Ephesus, but I know it's the 5th century AD, somewhere in the 400s AD, if you know anything about Ephesus, you would know that that was a uh, a place that where uh, women were heavily worshipped. Case in point, uh, uh, Diana, okay? The worshipping of the so-called goddess Diana. As a matter of fact, let's uh, see if I can get the scripture here. Ephesus or Ephesus. That was like a, uh, a center... A center for uh, women's worship, or the worship of the mother, the mother goddess. Which that, when you say that uh, the mother of our Lord didn't have a husband to uh, impregnate her, thereby bringing her son, then you're putting Mary on a godlike status. Essentially, what you're doing is. You're worshiping Mary as the queen of heaven. So essentially what you're doing is worshiping the queen of heaven. But here, here's the account right here in the book of Acts 19 and 26. It says this. Well, let me see where I should start here. Well, let's start at the 23rd verse. And the same time there arose no small stir about that way. For a certain man named Demetrius, a silversmith which made silver shrines for Diana, brought no small gain unto the craftsmen. Now who was this Diana? This was a, a, a statue of a female goddess that a lot of Israelites were worshipping. Diana also represented the queen of heaven, whom he called together with the workmen of like occupation and said sirs you know that by this craft we have our wealth moreover ye see and hear that not only at Ephesus but almost almost throughout all Asia this Paul have persuaded and turned away much people saying that there be no gods which are made with hands so that not only this our craft is in danger to be set at naught, but also that the temple of the great goddess Diana, the temple of the great goddess Diana. So it makes sense, or it would make sense that the, the teaching of Mary being divine, Mary being a goddess, would come out of Ephesus. Okay? That's why, oh, that's where they held the council. Like I said, I'm, I'm not sure of the exact year, but I know it's in the 400s AD somewhere. That's where they held that council that said Mary was divine, you know, that uh, she didn't have a husband, that she got pregnant by the Holy Spirit. It was a miraculous birth. That came out of Ephesus, man. And when you read accounts like this, it makes sense because that was the center for women worship, Ephesus was. Let's read on. So that not only this our craft is, is in danger to be set at naught, but also that the temple of the great goddess Diana should be despised. And where was this temple? In Ephesus. And her magnificence should be destroyed, whom all Asia and the world worshipeth. And, and they, they worship that philosophy to this very day. If you believe that... Uh, that Mary never had a husband, okay, and that somehow she miraculously got pregnant, whether it be by the Holy Spirit or an angel or whatever you believe, that she didn't have a husband, then really secretly or tacitly, you were worshiping this great goddess Diana. You're really worshiping the queen of heaven, okay? So did they take Mary, the mother of our Lord, did they take and make her 
equal to this great goddess Diana? Absolutely. That's what the Catholic Church uh, did back in the 400s AD. Okay? Let's read on. And when they heard these sayings, they were full of wrath and cried out saying, Great is Diana of the Ephesians. There you go. And the whole city was filled with confusion. And having caught Gaius and Arist Aristarchus, men of Macedonia, Paul's companions in travel, they rushed with one accord into the theater. So there you go. So the point is, Ephesus was one of those main hubs, if not the main hub, where the, the worshiping of the woman was pushed, women worship. And that equates to Mary, you know, such as they say, Mary, the mother of God, Mary, the divine goddess. All goes back to the queen of heaven worship, man. So now let's get back to Matthew 13. Matthew 13 and 55. Is not this the carpenter's son? So the point I'm making is prior before this council at Ephesus, where it was settled that Mary became divine and she didn't have to have a husband. She was pregnant by the Holy Spirit, though she had a miraculous birth. Prior before that, everybody knew that Yahweh had a father. And they not only that, they knew what, his, what the occupation or what his father's occupation was, which was a carpenter. That's why it is written here, is not this the carpenter's son? They knew. Okay? Is not his mother called Mary? See? And his brethren James and Joses and Simon and Judas? So they were well aware of his family. They didn't believe that his, that his mother had <laughs> was preg impregnated divinely. They didn't believe that nonsense. That's the point. <laughs> they knew his family. That's why they were offended in him when he made that to them that outrageous statement that he was the son of the only the only begotten son of the heavenly father. Okay, <laughs> which is the truth, but they didn't want to accept it. Let's read on. And his sisters are they not all with us? Whence have or whence then have this man all these things? And they were offended in him. Why were they offended at him? Which is the name of this lesson. Because they knew his family, man. Which includes his father, his mother, and his sisters, and his brothers. So what does that do? That destroys that philosophy of Yahweh Shai not having a biological father. That's what that do, does. And they were offended at him, but Yahweh Shai said unto them, A prophet is not without honor, save in his own country, which is where he was, and his own house. Hell, you had uh, uh, a couple of his brothers, Joses and Simon, that were offended in him. They didn't, they, didn't, they didn't acknowledge him as being the only begotten son of the Heavenly Father. <laughs> All right? Two of his own brothers. Okay? That would be Joses and Simon. So that's the point, man. Clearly in the 55th verse... It clearly says here, is not this the carpenter's son? Now, if you believe that he was impregnated or Mary was impregnated by the Holy Spirit, are you saying the Holy Spirit that impregnated Mary was a carpenter? Or if you believe it was an angel, are you saying the angel was a carpenter? <laughs> no, Joseph was a carpenter. Uh, 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 uh. A fleshly man, a fled, and, a, a fled, a flesh and blood man, okay, that had the, the the sperm, if you will, the lineage of David, within his nutsack, which he put inside of Mary, and brought forth the one you call Jesus, which his name is Yahweh Shai. That is the truth, okay. All right, so with that, it's on to the next one.